questions for reflection. The second chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles reveals the way that the early Christians lived their lives differently because of the saving incarnation, the conception, life, suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They were known by the people as the way because their faith gave birth to an entirely new way of life. Before they were called Christians in Antioch, the followers of Jesus Christ were referred to as the way. The Apostle Paul wrote of having persecuted this way prior to encountering the risen Lord on the road to Damascus. The expression, the way, discloses the self-understanding of the early Christians. They believed, proclaimed, and lived their Christian faith as a new way of being human. Our relationship with Jesus Christ and membership in His body, the church, is meant to be experienced in the same way. Do we? Our second reading is an excerpt from the first chapter of the first letter the Apostle Peter writes to all the churches. He's instructing them in how to live this new way. Just prior to the verses read today, he's called them to holy living. That holy living, he explains, should give rise to a new way of relating to one another and to those to whom they are sent. He reminds them they have been delivered from a futile way of life. So have we. When we follow Jesus in both word and deed, a dynamic process happens within us, a process of ever-deepening conversion and transformation. We change. We are being converted. We actually participate in the divine nature. The Apostle Peter tells us in his second letter, beginning right now, we're made complete, perfected in charity by grace and by our continued cooperation with grace we begin to change into the very men and women that Jesus Christ has now capacitated us to become. Our gospel for this third Sunday of Easter is from Luke. The apostle recounts the disciples walking toward Emmaus, forlorn and perplexed over what had occurred to the Lord. And Jesus draws near to them on their journey, but they don't recognize him. This is a common theme in many of the post-resurrection appearances recounted in the scriptures. The disciples continue their discussion of the events which had occurred during the days before, surprised that the stranger beside them seemed unaware of what had occurred. In his empathy and compassion, Jesus enters into their experience and listens. Then he gives them the most profound expository sermon, or homily as Catholics call it, of all time. He explains the scriptures and shows these travelers how they all referred to the Christ. He explains the very events they were recounting to him on the road. However, even after the word was broken open by the living word incarnate, the disciples still did not recognize Jesus. They invited their fellow traveler to stay with them. Stay with us for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. And out of the depth of the love in his sacred heart, he agrees. Then we read or hear these wonderful words. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, we're not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and he has appeared to Simon. And then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. From the earliest centuries, Christians have understood this great encounter on the road as referring to the Holy Eucharist, the great sacrament of love, wherein Jesus Christ gives himself completely to us, body, blood, soul, and divinity. This is the sacrament we call Holy Communion because it brings us into communion with the Lord and in him with one another. Of course, in light of that, this wonderful encounter on the way to Emmaus opens up in beauty for all who reflect on it prayerfully during this Easter season. In the light of the encounter with the Lord and the breaking of the bread, their eyes were opened. 
So it is meant to be with each one of us. The Holy Eucharist is more than a commemoration. It's an invitation into communion with the living God right now because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and walks with us on the road of life.